Investors today woke to the calm after the storm. This week saw a torrid time for equity markets both here and in the US. Uncertainty looming large as fears flared over a new front for the trade war. At home, the sell-off began Wednesday, but the biggest losses were yesterday. A combined $70 billion was sold off the ASX in two days. Fears over a poorer US economy led Wall Street to its biggest fall in six weeks. But one Wall Street veteran says the only certainty is uncertainty. S&P Dow Jones Indices' Craig Lazara says safe havens don't change even if turbulent times do. Craig, it's been a tough couple of days on Wall Street. We've seen some massive losses in the tens of billions of dollars. Is there any reason for people to be putting their money in equity markets these days? Well, the, the, the history of, of equity markets, both very distant history and, and rather recent history is that very often after a big decline is, is a particularly good time to invest. So I, I have no particular forecast for what's going to happen today or tomorrow. Uh, well, tomorrow's Saturday, so I guess, I guess I do have a forecast for that. But I have no particular forecast for what's going to happen in the very near future. But certainly, historically speaking, selling reflexively immediately after a loss has been a bad idea. Do you think that um, the only sort of guarantee that we can have in equity markets is that there will always be uncertainty? Oh, of course. I mean, the, the, that's life. I mean, they're, they're, equity markets are designed to reflect the fortunes of, of businesses uh, and, and other, the fortunes of economies, and none of that's certain. So, yeah, there, there, will, there will certainly always be uncertainty. There may be relative degrees of uncertainty. If you look at the environment today, for example, there are uncertainties about, well, let's take an example, uh, in Europe, what happens with Brexit? No one really knows. Ten years ago, we didn't have that to worry about. Uh, in the U.S., what happens with, with tariff wars against China, against uh, Europe? Now, there, there, are, there are uncertainties, but there are, always, there are always some. Do you think we would see the level of volatility we've seen in the last 12 months, say, if we didn't have those two key issues you just referred to? Well, you, you might very well uh, still have the same level of volatility. Volatility has been surprisingly low considering how it feels. I mean, it, it, I, 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 I hope that doesn't sound too, too cryptic, but it, it feels like we've been through a really volatile time. And of course, the, if the, the standard measure of volatility in the U.S. is the, is the VIX index, which I know tick, has ticked up in the past few days. Uh, but over time, uh, certainly for the past year, VIX has generally been below its long-term average. What we've seen happen is, in most indices, certainly U.S. And, and Australian indices, there's been kind of a moderate dispersion of results. Some stocks do well, some stocks do badly. We call that, the, the, that spread, we call dispersion. But the correlation of, of movements, in other words, the, the tendency of stocks to move up or down together, has been really quite low. And when correlations are low, volatility is typically not all that high. And that's, that's really what we've seen. The other part of the answer to your question is, if it hadn't been for the three things I mentioned, it might very well have been something else. Uh, you're, you're, you're unlikely, you know, this side of the grave, ever, ever to be in a, in, a, in a time of complete calm. We're in an unusual situation globally where we're seeing central banks cut interest rates very yeah. regularly, you know, an indication overnight uh, that uh, Jerome Powell is going to cut again within weeks, and that has actually boosted Wall Street's numbers overnight. What impact is that environment having on people who are or are not investing in equity markets? Well, if you're not in equity markets, presumably whatever wealth you have is invested either in, in property or in, 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 uh, in deposits or, or bonds. Obviously, since the financial crisis, so now coming on, on 10 years, rates have been extraordinarily low by historical standards. Uh, if you're, uh, say, a retiree who, who 10 years ago retired, put a lot of money in the bank, uh, and, and thought you could just draw the interest out and, and, and live on it, you probably have been unpleasantly surprised uh, because rates have been much, much lower. Uh, now, low rates are, are oftentimes good for property, so that, that may be an offsetting thing. But uh, there's an expression uh, in, in Wall Street sometimes, of TINA, T-I-N-A, there is no alternative. And part of the supposed rationale between central banks or, or behind central banks keeping rates so extraordinarily low has been that they want to encourage capital to move into the equity market. And I think that's it. Whatever else it may have done, it's been successful at that. And equity markets have been have been quite strong. 
We spoke about the volatility that we've seen uh, in equity markets. Is the key to ensuring uh, strong growth investing in those very volatile stocks or in low volatility stocks? Well, now you raise a very interesting question. Uh, there is the short answer to which is if I had to choose, I'd prefer low volatility stocks to high volatility stocks. The reason for that is, uh, and if we've done this research in the U.S. and Australia, all over the world, there is what professors call a, a low volatility anomaly, usually, a, a, sometimes a low volatility effect. But in point of fact, even though you would expect, because we all know that risk and return are, are two sides of the same coin, you would expect that more volatile or riskier assets should earn a premium return. I mean, certainly if you look at equities over long periods of time, they're riskier than bonds, they own higher returns than bonds. Within the equity market, lower volatility stocks in, in the U.S., Australia, Europe, all over the world, lower volatility stocks over time tend to outperform higher volatility stocks. And that, that's, that's, it doesn't seem like it should be there. And there are a number of, of good reasons why this effect exists. Uh, but the, the low vol phenomenon is, is, is alive and well all over the world. In fact, in the U.S., uh, we have a range of, we call them factor indices. Some people refer to them as smart beta. Uh, but factor indices, which are subsets of the S&P 500 designed to focus on particular attributes. So cheap valuation, uh, low volatility, high momentum, thing, things of that nature. And the best performing factor in 2019 by far is low volatility. Uh, so this has been, a, and low volatility tends to do well when the markets are choppy and the markets have been choppy. So not a bad time. So are we seeing more people invest in those kinds of stocks? The money is, yeah, the, the, the ETFs, for example, that track low volatility have, have, have done very well this year. They're attracting new assets. There's certainly a lot of interest in it. Craig Lazaro, it's great to talk to you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Rachel.